Welcome to problem set four. In this problem set, I'm going to have you write a random tester or fuzzer. In our example, we're going to be fuzzing PDF files and our application is a couple of PDF readers. This example is taken from Charlie Miller's fuzzer, Babysitting an Army of Monkeys. I encourage you all to look at these links. To start this fuzzer, we begin by choosing a random file and choosing a random PDF application. We then read in all of the bytes from our file and store them in a buffer. Next, we run a random function to determine the number of writes that we'll be doing based on a fuzz factor. We define this fuzz factor to be 250. Now you can see as the fuzz factor increases, the number of writes decreases. Based on the number of writes, we create a byte, a random byte, and choose from our buffer one of the bytes that we're going to overwrite. We then overwrite that byte with a random one, and we continue to do that until we get to the number of writes. Finally, we write all of our new bytes to a file, a new file, so we don't overwrite our old one. And we then use the sub process module to open our application with our new file. Now, when you run this script, you might see your program go crazy. And if that happens, then you've done it correctly. Now, there are a few things I want to point out. This chunk of code is the heart of the fuzzer. This is all that you really need for this program to work. A couple of other things, notice that we don't do any logging. This is bad practice for all programmers. You should always do logging in your applications to make debugging easier. So what I want you to do is write a fuzzer based on the one that we gave you for real world applications. In our example, we fuzz tested PDF files. After you've written your fuzzer, I want you to go to the forums and link to your fuzzer, show what you fuzzed, describe any bugs that you found, and explain how you would improve your fuzzer in the future. Post all these things to the forum, and when you're finished, check this box. Now, of course, you can check this box without actually having done the problem set, but then what will be the point? Good luck on problem set four.